with that we can move on to start stack scan we are still trying to take a text and imagine the corresponding image stack scan is going to have two stages rather than one stage in the first stage you are going to train a neural network that is going to output 64 by 64 images so lower resolution images in the next stage you are going to go into higher resolution and this is actually a good trick to know about when it comes to generating images you can start with low resolution images and then move on to higher and higher resolution because for higher resolution you suddenly have to generate data that are really high dimensional this is 256 by 256 times 3 and that's a huge dimension and 64 by 64 is much better and learning the underlying distribution of a very high dimensional data is more challenging so maybe it starts simple and then up resolve that's the idea the neural network architecture is gonna reflect that two stage you start with your text you embed it but once you do your embedding this is the vectorized version of this text take that push it through a neural network having two heads and these are fully connected neural networks so there is nothing fancy going on here you have a vector you want to get two vectors out of it and you're doing vector matrix multiplication with an activation times another matrix that's going to give you a mean and a standard deviation and this is going to give you the prior that you're going to sample from previously you would take phi you would put it uh, in some portion of your uh, output vector so half of your features were coming from phi the other half were coming from some random number generator now this other half we are being a little bit more careful we get a mean we get a standard deviation we sample from normal distribution you multiply that vector by a variance at the mean and then that's going to give you c zero hat and that's the vector that's that you're going to put here what are we doing this green vector here is random previously you would just take your embedding and copy it here now this guy is going to be random that's one change the other part is still there you're doing conditional GANs so this part is still there you can concatenate the two you upsample and the way that you're going to upsample is usually going the inverse of a convolution and that's going to be called transpose convolution so that's just a derivative of a convolution or the other option is to do nearest neighbor sampling or nearest neighbor interpolation and then a regular convolution and the second option is gonna turn out to be better it's less complicated and at the same time better because it's not gonna lead into artifacts like checkerboard type of artifacts but these details don't worry about them because we are gonna spend a lot of time designing generators that's going to give you an image this is a fake image this is a real image now the job of your discriminator is to take a fake image and say it's fake it has to take a real image and it needs to say it's a real image but you're not done this is gonna once the training is done for that in the first stage these are the type of images that you're going to end up with low resolution missing some details like the head of the bird is missing let alone having a long orange peak the entire head is missing what are you going to do next you need to keep carrying your text with you all the time so the text is going to go in your discriminator in the generator in the generator of the next stage and in the discriminator of the next stage so that one we always have it we do this conditional augmentation operation that we talked about up there to give us randomized vectors c hats not only that now this stack scan for the second stage is conditioning on the outcome of the first stage so it's gonna have some big picture in a coarse resolution of what the image should look like so now its job is much simpler it is trying to build off an image that is already sort of good enough and make it perfect you take the image down sample it concatenate the outcomes of these two operations together 
put them through push them through a residual block up sample to 256 by 256 and then you have a discriminator operating at higher resolution telling you real versus fake mathematically speaking what do you have in the first stage what is your loss function you have your discriminator for the first stage you need to train that and your discriminator needs to do the correct job if you show it a real image it needs to say it's a real image if you show it a fake image it should tell you that it's a fake image at the same time it is conditioned on the text and the generator is taking as input c hat and z and those are what you have here that's the loss function for the discriminator for the generator you take you go the reverse route of a discriminator you want to make a discriminator make mistakes this first portion of your equation or loss function for discriminator doesn't depend on g so you can just get rid of it because you are optimizing over g then you borrow that you copy and paste it here but at the same time we know that things are not going to converge unless you do some regularization and this regularization idea is coming from variational autoencoders if uh, you don't know it, it yet you are going to know all the details later on but for now it is just trying to uh, regularize and where are you regularizing this mean and the standard deviation you don't want them to deviate too much from zero and identity you are still allowed to deviate but you don't want them to become too far away from zero and identity and that's a regularization and depending on this uh, coefficient you could be regularizing a lot to the extent that you are no longer conditioning on the text or you could be regularizing uh, in a reasonable manner so you need to play around with lambda this coefficient this is one of the hyperparameters that you need to tweak and this idea of conditioning augmentation is related to reparameterization trick and that one is going to show up uh, again when we do variational autoencoders and the idea is if you want to sample from normal distribution with a complex mean and a complex standard deviation you can instead sample from normal with mean zero and identity and then multiply that by the standard deviation and add the mean back so rather than sampling from this we're going to sample from a standard normal distribution that's stage one. Stage two is exactly the same. The only thing is that your neural networks change. And not only that, we learned about this matching aware discriminator in the previous slide. You're going to use that to modify your objective function here. Because here you can have true images corresponding to true text, true images corresponding to the wrong text, true images, actually wrong images or fake images corresponding to the true text and wrong images corresponding to wrong text and the idea of matching is you want to match the correct things together make them more probable the mismatches you want to make them less likely okay perfect you do your training some images are going to come out you want to evaluate how good those images are one option is to show those images to human beings and they're gonna judge the quality of these images and say yes they look good or they don't look good or alternatively there is this inception score metric which we are going to learn about later on but for now what is this metric telling us it is trying to balance the trade-off between two objective functions that we have first of all if our generator is generating images we want those images to be as diverse as possible to belong to all of these classes of birds you want to see all types of birds you want to see all types of flowers coming out of your generator at the same time if you focus on a particular class you want to see images that are narrow and are of high quality for that particular class and i kept talking about classes where are they going to come from they're going to come from a pre-trained neural network for image classification you take those generated images push them through a pre-trained discriminator or classifier and then you're going to read off the classes at the same time that you want to see all of the classes 
if you focus on a particular class, you want your distribution to be narrow. And that's, that's a sense of being high quality. And once you write down your formulas, take an exponential, that's gonna give you this inception score. And this score you can use to compare the quality of images. How good are they? And because it's a score, the higher is better. These are human, these are inception scores for COP data set. COP data set is for uh, birds. There is Oxford data set and there is COCO data set. So I want you guys to explore them. And StackGAN is going to do the best across all three of these data sets. And higher is better. This one is seven, this one is eight, according to the score. Or alternatively, you can show those images to human beings and they're going to rank them. And for ranking, the lower is better. This one is 1.89, this one is 1.11. Any questions about StackGAN? Was everything clear? Okay, perfect.